What's up guys, our September Patreon rewards are finally available. If you're interested in picking up a Full Art Brainstorm or Muldrotha the Gravetide, you can check out all the details at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today we are opening up a pack of dominaria uh, Obviously going to be rotating out of standard pretty soon. I'm a little sad about it. I'll be honest. I really liked dominaria um, I thought when it first came out it was kind of one of the one of the best sets we'd seen for a while at least uh, I don't think by any means it's one of my favorite sets, but uh, there were a lot of really, really cool mechanics and kind of new things that they did. Really, really boosting like legendary cards that came out with the uh, historic kind of mechanic. Uh, and then, of course, the sagas, which were really, really cool for a storytelling element. And honestly, playability as well. There's a lot of really, really great stuff out of this set. So uh, either way, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. So we will go through every single card. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick would be. So our first card here is Opt. It's an instant for one blue. You can scry one, so you get to look at the top card of your library and then decide if you want to leave it on top or go ahead and just put it on the bottom. Uh, and then you draw a card. Very, very simple. Uh, very, very efficient. Perfectly, perfectly fine card to run. Uh, not first pickable necessarily. Uh, it will always be a good card in a blue deck. It's not an amazing card. Uh, card draw... We've talked about it a little bit, uh, tends to be a little bit overvalued and limited for some players. Uh, I'm by no means I'm trying to say that it's bad. Uh, it's very, very good, obviously, to have card draw, be able to get to your answers, get to your bombs. Definitely very, very powerful, but that one draw spell could have also been a bomb or a removal spell or something like that. And so it's not so much that it's bad, it's that there are other cards that you might rather see in place of those draw spells. That's not always the case, obviously, and in a blue deck, it's always very, very solid to have a piece uh, or two of some card draw in your deck. This helps you get there, and that's perfectly fine. A lot to say about this, obviously, but uh, it is not necessarily a first pickable card, but it is very, very solid. Uh, Adamant Will is an instant for one and a white. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains indestructible until the end of the turn. Uh, this is a bit of an above average uh, combat trick, in my opinion, solely because it gives that indestructible. So that plus two, plus two, very relevant, obviously. Instant speed, so you're going to be able to swing in with it, throw this on top of it if you really need to, and uh, hopefully deal like, a bit of damage. Uh, but on top of that, that indestructible is really good because you can use this defensively. You can use it in response to a, uh, a removal spell on the opponent's side of the field. Uh, if it's saying destroy target creature, you throw this on there, that, that spell now fizzles. I mean, it's not going to work. And so it's actually a really, really lucrative card, a little bit more flexible than just your average combat trick, and I like it for that reason. Again, I would say definitely not first pickable. I don't like first picking a combat trick anytime, but uh, as far as combat tricks go, I don't think this is a bad one. Uh, Gitu Lava Runner is a 1-2 for 1 red, and as long as there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, it gets plus 1, plus 0, and has haste. So, first things first, this is a bit of an above average 1-drop regardless. I just want to point that out. If you're in a red deck and you, you need a 1-drop, this is perfectly fine. It's a very, very good one. 1-2 one, for 1, on point. I love it. Uh, potentially, a 2-2 two, two for 1. And has haste, which is awesome. Very, very good. However, uh, this would definitely run into the... there. So in case you have not played much of this set, a lot of it was very tribal-centric. Uh, and Wizards, the blue-red kind of wizard-style deck, was very, very popular and very much a Spells Matters kind of deck. Uh, very, very powerful. Uh, very, very good, in my opinion. So uh, this card goes very well in that deck. However, it's not a reason to be in that deck by any means. It's not saying, okay, this is the card that I really need to make this deck work. No, it's it's really just a solid card. It's not amazing. Very early game, obviously. It's not going to have any relevance truly in the late game. Uh, and so it's really just for the early game matchup. You just want to be able to throw some things onto the field, maybe apply a little bit of early game pressure. This is great for that, but that's about it. So as much as I think this is probably the best card so far in the pack, 
I do not think that this is a first pickable card at all. So I'm honestly just going to go ahead and move it over here. I don't think we'll be picking it. Uh, at least I really hope not. Uh, Divest is a sorcery for one black. Target player reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or a creature card from it. And that player discards that card. So very similar to cards like Duress uh, or Thoughtseize. However, obviously, uh, similar to Duress, this is very uh, narrow in that it only hits creatures and or artifacts. Uh, what's good about that, actually, is in Limited, that's not a bad thing. You're probably going to be up against a lot of creatures. And so it's actually nice to be able to just one for one something out uh, and then just never have to worry about it again, ideally. Uh, and so I actually like it for that reason. I don't think it's an amazing card uh, in a sort of control style deck. It's fine. Uh, like a blue black, maybe tempo deck would be really, really ideal. Uh, again, not amazing, but uh, the reason I like this, if you can get it early, it's very good. If you don't get it early, it tends to be quite bad. Limited tends to get down to top decks uh, in a lot of cases if you really stall out the game. Uh, and in a deck like this, you probably are stalling out the game. And in that case, you top deck this, well, your opponent might not even have cards in hand. Uh, and if that's the case, this is very, very bad. So I'm not thrilled with this card. I would definitely take the Lava Runner over it. Uh, but again, don't think either one is necessarily first pickable. Uh, Adventurous Impulse is a sorcery for one green. Look at the top three cards of your library. You can uh, reveal a creature or a land card among them. Put it into your hand and then put the rest on the bottom of your library. So... Uh, very much just green card selection, perfectly fine in a green deck. I think it's, a uh, it's good because it's so cheap. Uh, it only costs one green mana, which means ideally you'll be able to play this, then play maybe the creature you pull off of it or some other creature in your hand, some kind of relevant spell. Uh, I, again, it's very similar to card draw. I don't think it's amazing. Definitely not a first pickable card. It's not giving you any direction by any means. Uh, and so I don't love it, but if you're in green, definitely not a bad one. Uh, Pardic Wanderer uh, is a 5 5 for 6 of any color and it does have trample. Uh, worth noting, artifacts are historic permanents in this set. Uh, it does not say that on this card, but uh, historic is very important in this one. Uh, this card, though, however, uh, it is fairly strong. It's a 5 5 with trample. Uh, for 6 of any color means it's very flexible in the decks that it can be run in. Uh, it's just not that great. Uh, it's kind of like your last ditch effort for a bomb. Uh, you, I mean, if you don't have a bomb, this is a great pickup, but it's not a good bomb. It's not something that you really want. So I don't love this card. Uh, e to be honest, I'm honestly going to pull this out just for now. Uh, still really hoping we're going to replace it, but, uh, do not love this card in general. I don't think it's that great. Okay, here we go. Get rid of that. Uh, eviscerate is a sorcery for three and a black. Very simply destroy target creature. This is what we're talking about. This is premium removal right here. It destroys any creature right off the back. Obviously, we saw that, uh, that, that combat trick that gives indestructible, which is a little silly. But uh, generally speaking, you know you're going to be able to take a creature out with this. You can deal with any prob problem creature uh, on the opponent's side of the field with a card like this. Yes, it is sorcery speed, but that's fine. Four mana sorcery, destroy any creature. I'm in. That's great. Uh, and so honestly, this is a very, very easy first pick so far. Uh, we'll see what the rest of the pack holds, of course. Uh, Voltaic Servant is a 1-3 for 2 of any color, and then at the beginning of your end step, untap target artifact. Uh, again, pretty good in an artifact-centric uh, deck because there are actually a lot of artifacts that you'll want to re-tap for either an ability or, uh, or excuse me, untap for an ability, or in the case of like Traxos, for instance, which is a very, very powerful rare uh, in this set, it's like a 7-7 seven, seven for 4 or something ridiculous. It doesn't untap on its own, and a card like this helps it uh, continually untap and be able to deal that damage. So, uh, not a card to, to first pick by any means, but if you happen to be in that deck or you happen to find a Traxos, definitely, definitely a very key card for it. Uh, Seismic Shift is a sorcery for 3 and a red. Destroy target land, and then up to 2 target creatures cannot block this turn. So... Normally, I'm very against running land destruction, especially in limited. Uh, I think in constructed, you can get away with it a little more, but uh, in limited, it tends to be pretty bad because uh, it's not that big. Of, I mean, it is a setback, but it's not the biggest setback in the world, and it tends to be very slow. 
Uh, however, what's nice about this is it does mean that a couple creatures can't block. And if you're in a very, very aggressive deck, which there are a number of them in this set, uh, then you're able to really push through that extra few points of damage. That might mean you're going to win the game. Uh, and so I don't necessarily like first picking this by any means, and I would generally say you should sideboard this. Uh, but there are decks out there, very, very aggro-focused decks, that would not mind running maybe one of these main deck just for the simple fact that that makes the opponents a little bit, uh, makes their creatures not able to block, and that's pretty important in a deck like that. Uh, Academy Drake uh, is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. It does have Kicker, so you can pay 4 uh, if you would like as you cast this. Uh, it does have flying, and then if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it. So this is either a 2-mana, or excuse me, a 3-mana 2-2 two, two flyer, or it is a 7-mana 4-4 four, four flyer. Uh, not amazing, but uh, honestly, it's not a bad card to have solely because it is evasive, it is a flyer. Uh, and there are going to be instances where just having a, an evasive threat in the air is going to be really, really key. Uh, so I don't necessarily like picking these up very early. Uh, however, it is actually not as bad as maybe you would think on the onset. Uh, the fact that it has that kicker just means it's a little bit more relevant in the late game as well as the early game. And I like that as well. It's that flexibility that's very, very key and limited. Uh, our first uncommon here is Time of Ice. This is a saga. This was introduced in this set. Really, really interesting uh, set of cards. Very interesting art as well. It is three and a blue and it is an enchantment. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, basically, uh, you you put a counter on it, you get the first effect. At the beginning of your next upkeep, or excuse me, after your draw step, I should be more specific, you put another lore counter on it, in which case the second ability will trigger. And then again, on that following right after your draw step, you'll get that third counter, and then the final ability uh, will happen, and then you sacrifice uh, the enchantment. So uh, for one and two, you tap target creature and opponent controls. It does not untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control time of ice. Worth noting solely because you do sacrifice it after the third counter. Uh, but on that third counter, return all tapped creatures to their owner's hands. So it is a pretty solid tempo play, honestly. Um, I, I'm a little skeptical. It's a bit slow. That's my only thing. Uh, and I'd rather be playing like a relevant creature or like solely hard removal on that creature. If there's like a problem creature, I'd rather just straight up remove it. Uh, now this can be very, very good. I don't think it's a bad card. I actually think it's honestly one of the best cards in the pack by a long way. Um, and I may be misevaluating this a little bit because I did not get the chance to play with this card in particular. I did draft this set, uh, but I didn't draft it as much as I would have liked. Eviscerate seems a little bit better to me uh, just because it's a little bit more flexible and it's hard removal and I actually really like that. So for me, I'm going to go Eviscerate. That might be incorrect again. Uh, that's just my assessment as of right now. Uh, Gaia's Blessing is a sorcery for one and a green. Target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. You draw a card, and then when it when it's put into your graveyard from your library, you shuffle your graveyard into your deck. So uh, that last line of text, very rare, rarely will that be uh, super relevant. However, it is kind of nice to be able to bring a few things back from the graveyard. Um, I will say... I generally like something that puts them straight up into your hand. I don't think this is as good because of that. It does draw you a card, so it's going to replace itself, which is actually really, really nice and relevant in Limited. You never really want to be down on card, card advantage. Uh, but I don't think this is an amazing card. Definitely not better than Eviscerate for sure. Well, and our rare is Karn's Temporal Sundering. So it's a legendary sorcery. So it's four and two blue. You can only cast a legendary sorcery if you control a legendary creature or a planeswalker. Uh, easier than you think in this set because there is a legendary in every single pack. Uh, it's very, very easy actually to get three to six, maybe even more than that, uh, if you're really going for it. So it's really not that big of a, a, a setback. However, it is worth noting, if you don't have it, you can't play it. And that means it is a dead card in your hand, which is not good. But uh, regardless, target player takes an extra turn after this one, return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then you exile uh, the Temporal Sundering. Honestly, I really like this card. The art is beautiful, by the way. Uh, really like this card. Uh, it is tough because you do have to have that legendary creature out. However, again, it's fairly easy to get those. Uh, so my hope is that I would be able to play this, and I do think I take it over Eviscerate here. 
Um, the problem you get with like time walk effects uh, is that a lot of times if you have this in your opening hand or you have this on curve, it literally doesn't do that. You, you play a land, you play this, and then you get in another turn. I mean, that's cool. Uh, and ideally in limited, that could be really, really big depending on your board presence. Uh, but a lot of times you might not have a great board. And so in that case, stuff like, you know, you, you play a land, you get another turn, you play another land. Cool. Way to be there. But uh, I do think it's worth it because there are instances where this just goes way, way over the top and can straight up win you the game. Give yourself two attack steps. That's all you need to win sometimes. And I just think this is relevant enough that I would take it. So, so far, that's the pick. Uh, we do have, yes, our legendary creature, uh, Volduck, Keeper of the Flame. Uh, it's a 3-2 for two and a red. At the beginning of combat on your turn, for each aura and equipment attached to Volduck, Keeper of the Flame, create a 3-1 red elemental creature token with trample and haste and then you exile those tokens at the beginning of the next end step uh volduck is actually a pretty aggressive and interesting card there is kind of a boros equipment or aura style deck uh and this is a very key card in it and i like it it encourages aggression which is great and limited it does die a little bit easy but uh that's okay it's not terrible uh it, it's just it really, really pushes that aggression, which is always good and very, very welcome and limited. Uh, I still think, though, honestly, I have to take the the Karn's Temporal Sundering. That just has the potential, the highest potential of any of the cards here. Uh, there are a lot of really, really good picks. Actually, the Eviscerate, the Volduck are both very, very strong. Uh, but again, Karn's Temporal Sundering, I think I have to take. So that's my pick. Feel free to disagree in the comment section below. Like I said, I did not get the opportunity to play with every single card in this set. Uh, so I may be misevaluating a little bit, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts as always. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Please don't forget as well to enter our giveaway going on right now for Throne of Eldraine. Uh, our, our winner, I believe, will be picked on the 7th, uh, Monday, October 7th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but you will get the opportunity to win a free Throne of Eldraine bundle. Uh, so good luck to everybody that's entered so far, and hopefully you guys will sign up as well. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.